I'm currently working on the tie lines between the phone exchange and the Cisco router. For testing purposes I've hooked up this red phone and uh, I can show you what a tie line call would look like. To get to the tie line we dial the access code of 38. That will then give us dial tone from the Cisco. At that point we can dial phone numbers on the asterisk server. This is a test number. Move along now, there's nothing to see here. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. At the moment only these two selectors behave the right way. These two are faulty uh, and while they work for local calls they don't work for the tie line. So I'm going to have to investigate those further. Because these selectors go wrong reasonably often they designed it so that they can be removed from the phone exchange. This gives me an excuse to show you close up a little bit more of how the technology actually works. These here are relays, so you have a large electromagnet that attracts this armature that operates a set of spring contacts. In the case of the fault that we've got at the moment, it's this relay and these spring contacts that are either dirty, out of adjustment or generally not making contact properly. So I can get at them and I can clean them and adjust them and we'll see what difference that makes. I think I've found the fault, or at least one of them. Uh, this relay has a problem with its contact stack. This lifting pin here is supposed to be attached to this contact so that when the armature operates these contacts operate properly but instead it's just flapping around in the breeze it's not attached to anything and it's shorting out things that shouldn't be shorted and it's not operating the contacts properly so I'm gonna have to change it if I've got a spare one Ugh. So let's go through my stack of spare contacts a few moments later as luck would have it I've managed to find one of the right type so here it is this is what it should look like, it's all nice and solid. Uh, I just need to clean these wires off and swap it over. I can take the contacts off by undoing these two bolts here, but the real trouble is inside the back. So there are nine contacts here that I have to desolder, and all the wires are the same colour, so I'm going to have to be very careful to label these so that I know where they go. I've cleaned off all these contacts and I've labelled all the wires. There's only nine of them, but uh, yeah, now I can change the contact stack and hopefully get all the wires back in the right place. One hour later. Alright, there we go. It's not super pretty, but all the wires are in the right places. Uh, let's see if it works. Two thousand years later. Right, well, long story short, it didn't just work. It's taken a week of fiddling and cleaning and troubleshooting and adjusting wipers and adjusting spring contacts and you know, get basically giving this selector a complete overhaul. We're now in a position where all four of these selectors are able to make tie line calls so that's, uh, that's good to go. I was going to spend some time going into uh, the VoIP side of things but to be honest I think this video has taken me long enough to put together as it is so the VoIP side will wait for a, uh, another day. All the usual stuff if you want to see more about how I'm going to get this monster into a field in the middle of nowhere uh, drop me a comment, a thumbs up, uh, follow, you know the drill. See you in the next one.